then went into the brothels and things like that. It was uh, horrendous. We used to do 30, 40 guys a day. And we used to have a menu and things like that. I'm Beverly. I'm Georgina. You look great. <laughs> so do you. <laughs> I like the colour hair. <laughs> it's nice. How did you get into the sex industry? It always just seemed like a job that I would actually enjoy doing because I'm doing like a fun activity that I like to do all the time, but then getting paid for it. I don't feel very strongly about uh, like the social norms towards like sleeping around. So okay. at first it was kind of like part time, um, and now I've been doing it full time for like nearly a year. Well, I started in 1999, so that's a long time ago. Yeah. It was just a, an advert in the paper, um, just saying um, wanted escorts for uh, dinners and things like dinner dates. So I was a bit naive then. I got into um, the uh, agent's car and he said, right, we're going to do the rounds. And I went, uh, okay, what's that then? So he said, well, you're going to go see this man, this man, this man. And I went, but I thought it was going to be dinner and things like that. I was really naive. My legs were absolutely like shaking like a leaf. And uh, he said, no, you're going to see this one and this one. This one wants this one. I went, oh, OK. Better stop off at chemist then, because I ain't got nothing. Got no condoms or nothing. You know, I ain't got a clue. Got in, but all the clients that I see were very, really nice. So obviously you come home, you've got all the money. But then I got in the bath and I absolutely blabbed everywhere. I was just absolutely so upset. But then I looked at the money and I thought, well, at least I can eat tomorrow. And then I just went on from there. Yeah. So started working for an escort agency, then went into the brothels and things like that. And, you know, um, it was uh, horrendous. We used to do 30, 40 guys a day. And we used to have a menu and things like that to yeah. say what we used to do. Yeah, I think that's the one thing I haven't done is like have a manager or an agency yeah. or work in like the same house as people. Yeah, um, it's hard. Don't just that. because a lot of people like I've only ever heard bad things about those kind of situations, so yeah. I tend to stay away from it. It was um, something that you just fancied, or I didn't think, oh god, they earn loads of money, or like uh, that their lives were like really luxurious yeah. or anything. It was more just like it was more the sex that attracted yeah. me to the sex work. Oh, okay. Somebody messaged me saying that he sees new girls because he makes them feel very comfortable. Sold it to me like he was going to make the first time like really easy and nice because he's seen that my profile was new. Uh, so we went to the like a nudist spa in Kentish Town. I was supposed to be there for an hour for like X amount of money. Uh, but then he was giving me like Prosecco and stuff. And then I ended up being there for like a few hours. And then he didn't pay me until we got into the train station on the escalator. So I couldn't like get Can't out and count it. And he'd underpaid me as well. Uh, and he'd taken like photos of me and stuff. So I had to like make a rule where I don't take any clients that don't have any feedback. One of the hardest bits is like the nervousness yeah. and not knowing. Yeah. Yeah. How it's going to turn out. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm the same. <laughs> and older you get, it still gets, it's just the same. <laughs> yeah, great. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's still the same. You know, yeah. when I go into, you know, uh, hotels and things, I start shaking, oh my God, you know. But once you get through, it, you sort of, okay, I'm here now, yeah. just get on with it, you know. Uh, do you ever get men who don't want sex from you? Yeah, which is good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's quite good actually. You know, obviously um, some of them don't. They want other things, cuddle or something like that, or a cup of tea and a biscuit or whatever. Um, bit of domination I do, which is very mild. It's not in the, the very strictest of thing. Mm. Um, and they obviously don't want sex because that obviously is part of it, isn't it? I can't think of any time that somebody's not wanted the sex bit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah. It's I, cause <laughs> I have uh, like advertisers like a submissive service, so like basically I just am there for them to do whatever they want to do within oh, reason, okay. obviously within yeah, like, discussing right. the limits and stuff. I have one guy that uh, doesn't have sex because I think I think it's to do with him being married. He just wants to like whip and stuff. Um, do, you, do you not feel frightened about that though? Do you not feel um, no? I've got you're, you're okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like electrocuting. Uh, well, What's, uh, like oh, people okay. have like a okay, right. yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> apparently that's really sexy <laughs> oh, okay. Well, okay. I suppose I have to not be in control but I like to have my senses about me which is 
totally different. It's, it's going back when I first started. You have to have your senses about you, mm. you know. But um, I admire you for doing that. I, I, I couldn't do that. <laughs> I, I, no, I couldn't. The thing that I would like not want to do is like drinking out of a dog bowl and being led around on a collar. Like yeah. that to me, like I don't like the degrading or like the... Humiliation. Yeah, humiliation mm. stuff. I try and offer services that I genuinely enjoy so that I am having mm. a good time as well, hopefully. There is a part of me that's like it's a job. performing for them and like yeah. uh, trying to be their like ideal. Because that's what we're there for. What's the worst interaction you've had with a client? When I had my own flat, um, I had this guy that kept wanting to come in and see me, and it was a silly amount of money. It was pathetic. Anyway, he's come in. I said yes, no problem. They've gone into the room, and he's uh, he's given me the money. I've gone out, put it away, gone back in, and there he is standing with his trousers and his pants down and his rubber gloves on. And I'm going, OK, we didn't discuss this. What's this all about? I just didn't know what it was all about. <laughs> what do we want to do then? So he said, well, you know, he said, you're sort of like dirty, aren't you? Well, I just hit the roof. I went, uh, no, you can go. There's your money. Go. Really got up my nose. Yeah. Because obviously I'll go to the clinic and things like that, you know, and yeah. get checked out as you do. You have your injections and things like that, so you, you're clean. And I thought that was really degrading. I went, no. They don't realise that we get tested and look after ourselves mm. probably... Better than them. Yeah. Uh, my worst one was very recently. It's like... <laughs> somebody... Uh, messaged me and he said he had like a taboo and then he wanted to um, talk about it on the phone. He didn't want to write it. So that was like a red flag. I'm like, well, if you mm -hmm. can't have a paper trail of your taboo, then it's definitely illegal. And then he was just like, okay, fair enough. I searched his phone number in um, some like databases where we can do like reports and stuff. And uh, there was like four or five people that had had the conversation with them. He was into bestiality. So he wanted to ask them to have sex with a dog. Oh, no. I know. I was like, nobody's going to do that with you. That's no. insane. Yeah, they just think that, like, sex workers must be up for anything and, like, yeah. it's an OK question to ask. And I was like, that's just yeah. insanity. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what is your relationship like with your clients? Over the years, um, I do more um, quality rather than quantity now. I think my oldest one's 87. You know, it's been coming for years. Mm. But that's more like... Um, a friendship and they'll have a conversation and things like that and yeah perhaps we do something you know yeah i've uh, uh a lot of friends that used to be clients some of them will like stay clients uh so they will still book me for mm. a specific service but then like i'll go and hang out with them at their like comic yeah. book shop or whatever but they don't tell me that they're married straight away or like in a relationship i've tried the dating bit and it it, it doesn't work especially with the job mm. you know it always like gets, you know, too nitty gritty and they go, oh, you're doing that with someone else and you're not doing that with me and things yeah. like that. And it's all about them then, you know, at the end of the day. Yeah. Even sometimes they'll pretend like they're OK with it. Yeah. I don't think I'm like completely undateable. I just think I don't really have that much time to like invest in people. When I spend every single day emailing with men that want like so much of like, of you. they just want like the full girlfriend experience from the get-go. So they are you to yeah. tell them all about like your fantasies and like what you're going to do to them and all this kind of stuff. And that's exhausting. So then it to is. go and like try and date <laughs> yeah. somebody and it's not even like the physical energy, it's just like the emotional energy to yeah. like put into people. The guy that I was seeing for like three years and then he just like passed away out of nowhere. He was only like 40 or something. I felt guilty because I felt like I was holding him back from his life yeah. for the three years that he was with me because I went to the funeral. Listening to like his brother be like, oh, uh, he always wanted like a relationship and kids and stuff like that and it's like god he invested yeah. Yeah. the last years of his life into me which was obviously going nowhere but you know at the end of the day that's good though because that's what he wanted to do right. how has the industry changed during your career it's kind mm -hmm. of like a good and bad because we're talking more openly about sex work now that like people are getting a better view of it and not like having all these like horrible stereotypes about us we've changed the language up now to make it more respectful to sex yeah. workers but the younger guys would always say um, are you escorting today are you working today um things like that yeah it is the older ones that are like say that i'm whoring or yeah that I'm prostituting i don't myself. like that word i don't no, like that word it's but then i just go yeah okay whatever whatever you want to call it i don't care <laughs> 
What would you say to someone getting into the sex industry? When you go into it, you go into it by yourself. You don't have anyone to tell you how to do it no. right or like safely. No. I made all of the mistakes. My first few times were literally just like stumbling around. There's a website and it's safe with the two A's, I think. I would send them a link to that, tell them to read the entire thing and then consider if they still want to get into it. Like, these are the laws, this is how you could keep yeah. yourself safe, these are potential things that can go wrong um, before you make the decision. Uh, I think it's actually illegal to give uh, somebody advice or to teach them how to do sex work because it's technically considered managing them yeah. and that's like pimping, so that's... I can't say anything to them actually. Yeah. <laughs> you just got to say be safe really. The longer that it goes on, the more that I lose faith in the fact that I'm going to have like a job in my chosen industry. Um, rather than do sex work all the time, but I don't, I don't think I'd be that mad if I was still doing sex work either. Keep on, girl. Yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> I should probably still be doing the same thing as long as I'm physically able to. Yeah. That's the main thing. Anyway, it was lovely to meet you. Yeah, you too. And you take care. <laughs> you look after yourself. Yeah, I will. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> take us through your favourite body mods and tattoos. I suppose my tongue split would be my, my cos that was my first mod, so that's pretty special yeah and that's yeah, like what got yeah. me into it all let's have so. a look <laughs> what did your parents think were you, you were so young at the time yeah no they didn't they didn't 